Hello everyone and welcome. It's lovely to have the return of the Reverend John Howard Norman, who is going to conduct the service this morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Lent. This year during Lent, we are invited to reflect upon the themes of Robert Schnees's book, 40 Days of Fruitful Living. Please contact the circuit administrator if you wish to receive the reflection sheet, details of other resources, or would like to join one of the discussion groups. Our theme this morning and across our reading for the coming week is passionate worship. What it is to worship God with our whole being. We listen to these words from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So let us sing our first hymn this morning from Singing the Faith, number 34, O Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we come before you to worship and adore you, for you are our creator, our saviour and our sustainer. Creator God, you are far beyond our comprehension. We cannot begin to imagine the immensity of your love or the wonders of your grace. Yet in your Son you offer us both love and grace freely and wholeheartedly. Your generosity towards us knows no bounds. Creator God, we worship and adore you. 
Lord Jesus Christ. You have poured out yourself upon the cross, making there the ultimate sacrifice so that God's love would be visible to the world and the power of sin would be broken. Lord, because of you, we too can know ourselves to be children of a loving Father. Holy Spirit, you come upon us as the comforter to sustain and strengthen our faith, to help us understand God's word and to equip us for service. You remind us every day that we are joined to God and to each other through our baptism, one family upon earth and in heaven. Holy Spirit, we worship and adore you. Amen. Our prayer of confession. In our worship, Lord, forgive all that is insincere. As we bring you our offering of praise, forgive our lack of trust. As we pray for the needs of the world, grant us the grace to also pray for ourselves in the knowledge that we cannot be a source of healing for other people until our own wounds are healed. By your grace, may we hear the words of Jesus as he says to us now, your sins, they are forgiven. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Psalms. Psalm 22, reading from verses 23 to 31. This section of Psalm 22 is a song of praise. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Honour him, you descendants of Jacob. Worship him, you people of Israel. He does not neglect the poor or ignore their suffering. He does not turn away from them, but answers when they call for help. In the full assembly, I will praise you for what you have done. In the presence of those who worship you, I will offer the sacrifices I promised. The poor will eat as much as they want. Those who come to the Lord will praise him. May they prosper forever. All nations will remember the Lord. From every part of the world they will turn to him. All races will worship him. The Lord is king and he rules the nations. All proud people bow down to him. All mortals bow down before him. Future generations will serve him. They will speak of the Lord to the coming generation. People not yet born will be told... The Lord saved his people. Thanks be to God for his word. Our next hymn is number 471 in Singing the Faith. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I come to know weaknesses I see in me.
reading is taken from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Jesus predicts his death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses this life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory, with the holy angels. Thanks be to God. We will now sing from Singing the Faith number 286, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the wondrous cross Which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor content. Love demands my soul 
Last week, Martin began our Lenten sermon series based upon 40 Days of Fruitful Living, a Lent course written by the American Methodist theologian Robert Schneezy. Martin guided us through the first of five themes or practices that Schneezy identifies, as we considered the radical hospitality of God. The God who was our loving parent tenderly whispers, You are accepted. And through that acceptance, we discover that we are the beloved, the one in whom God delights. So having considered God's unconditional love for us, this week our theme is loving God in return, or as Schneezy puts it, passionate worship. I'm at, at this point reminded of a certain famous high street store's advertising campaign, which when applied to our theme, might go something like this. This is not just worship. This is passionate worship. Mm. It feels a little bizarre that we should be reflecting upon the nature of our worship at a time when to keep us and everyone safe, we can't meet together in church, but rather must share in worship from home. I wonder why Schneezy should link those two words, passionate and worship, together. He could have chosen to write, what God wants is spirit-filled worship, mindful worship, heartfelt worship, all of which would have been right and appropriate, but instead he chose passionate worship. Passionate is one of those words that in our time has suffered from overuse. The words invariably dropped into conversation when the speaker wants to impress upon the listener that the subject being discussed really matters to them. We frequently hear people say, hmm, I'm really passionate about uh, chocolate cake, football, baking bread, gardening, gardening. Um, Zumba, the outdoors, and so on. This morning, I invite you to bring to mind what you feel passionate about. What or who really matters to you? So what about passionate worship? In Deuteronomy 6, God's people are commanded, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Notice the repeated use of the word all. God wants you to love him with all of your heart, all of your soul and all of your strength. To hold nothing back because God loves you utterly and completely and God longs for you to love him in the same way with all of your being, every last atom of you. Because God really matters to you. If we would be honest with God and with ourselves, we need to ask, how much does God matter to me, really? The problem with asking and indeed answering the question is that if we answer, yes, of course, God means the world to me, we can sound rather proud and smug even to ourselves. And then if our answer is, well, I'm not sure, or... I don't know. We can waste a lot of time beating ourselves up. The truth is that however much or little we feel we love God, our prayer must always be, dear God, give me grace to love you more. Whatever we may feel about the divine, God knows about the urgent concerns that press in upon us from every side family responsibilities, work or the lack of it, financial worries, health problems, either yours or someone you love. All those things and more need so much attention and so much love. And it's not therefore surprising that when we turn to the worship of God, we find ourselves anxious, distressed and distracted. Yes, that's our condition. Yet because of his great love for us, God understands. 
Yet still God says to you and me, love me with all your heart, all your mind and all your strength. In worship, we offer God our love and he wants all of it. When I sit down to write cards to family members at special times of the year, I've sometimes struggled to to write the words with all my love. It's so much simpler and less guilt inducing to simply write with love. Maybe you've wondered about this too. Can I love my wife June with all of my heart, yet still have enough love left for my two sons, daughter-in-law, grandson, other family members, friends and everybody else, let alone God? My wife bakes the most delicious chocolate cake, and yes, you may have gathered that already, that I'm passionate, really passionate about it. But love is not a cake, even if that cake can itself be a way of saying, I love you. The very nature of God is love, and love is eternal. It is by definition infinite. There is an infinite amount of love to go around. As Paul writes in his famous hymn to love in 1 Corinthians 13, love never fails. Or in another translation, as it's put there, love never comes to an end. But surely I hear you object. Uh, Paul was writing about divine love. That's not the same thing at all as human love. As someone who's struggled with dualistic thinking for far too long, I want to be clear. There's no such thing as divine love on the one hand and human love on the other. There is just love in all its pain and in all its glory. And yes, I realised that the Greeks had three words for love. They were just greedy. Love is God's surprising, wonderful and extraordinary gift to each and every one of us. Yes, of course, God loves us perfectly and will never, ever let us down. On the other hand, we human beings love God far from perfectly and are prone to all kinds of jealousies and betrayals. But however imperfect our love, it is still love. Imagine this. God's love and our love flow into the one vast ocean of love that connects us to God and to each and every human being on the planet and everyone who has ever lived. Which brings us to Jesus and his disciples. Jesus reveals to his friends for the first time just how much love he has for them and for the world and how much love that love will cost him. Nothing less than great suffering, rejection by powerful people, and then death. Poor old Peter, hot-headed and impulsive as ever, he's so desperate to tell Jesus off. He doesn't even hear that final thing that Jesus has to say, that after three days he would rise again. No, Peter just hears about a woeful future that he can't bear to contemplate. Jesus shared this prediction of his passion with his disciples because he wanted them to understand just how passionate he was about the world. And here we turn to another more ancient meaning of the word passion. Because of his passionate love, Jesus was willing to suffer greatly and die to demonstrate what kind of Messiah he would be. The Latin verb to suffer is passio, the root of the English word passion. Jesus' willingness to bear humiliation and suffering on the cross was without doubt the greatest single act of compassion anyone has ever shown. The word com passion, again translated from the Latin meaning, means to suffer with, to suffer with. In his suffering, Jesus suffers in total solidarity with the world, in all its confusion, heartache and pain. So when we come to worship, whether on a Sunday or in our private weekday devotions, we can turn to the one who not only understands what it is to be human, but who has compassionately offered up himself for us on the cross. As a young preacher, I would have finished this sermon here by urging us that as Jesus offered his all, we should offer our all. Let us be passionate for God, offering up our lives in devotion and service to God and to others, to spend ourselves and be spent and never count the cost. Or adapting the words of Jesus, let us deny ourselves, take up our individual crosses and follow him 
along the path of discipleship. All true. Now go and do it. But before you go, hold on, because that's not the end. There's more, and it truly is good news. When we hear those words of Jesus as he lays out the cost of discipleship, our minds are all too readily under all too readily undertake a rapid cost-benefit analysis, much like Peter did as he listened to Jesus talk about his own suffering and death. Hold on, the cost is too high, no way, all that self-denial and anyway, I can't carry a cross, literal or metaphorical, I'm not strong enough. God doesn't need lukewarm disciples or half-hearted worshippers, but if they happen to be that way, he still loves them. But for their sakes, as much as his, he longs for them to grow up and become fully formed, mature followers of Jesus. So let's put down our crosses just for a moment. And yes, I know it's Lent. So ignore the tutting of those who feel that, well, we're shirking. Remember that vast ocean of love. It's there right in front of you. I dare you. Go on, do it. You know you want to. Jump into that infinitely vast, unfathomably deep ocean that is the love of God. You see, before you can love God in return, worship, you have to get, and I mean really get, how much you are loved, how much you really matter to God. So what if our offering of passionate worship each week or each day is like taking a dip in this infinitely vast ocean of love, an ocean whose waters will carry you, caress you and wash you until all that's left is love. To worship passionately is to be all in, totally immersed in love because God wants all of you, all your heart, all your soul and all your strength, including those things or people that you are passionate about, which are the cause of your worries, concerns, regrets, hopes and dreams, your nagging fears, doubts and deepest longings. God wants it all, so it's allowed essential even to bring those things and those people with you in your heart as you worship. If you do that and turn up wholly dependent on God's love for you and are willing to risk getting more than a little wet in the ocean of God's love, your worship cannot fail to be anything less than passionate. Oh, and there is something else you will need to bring with you to worship your swimming costume. Thanks be to God. Amen.
as we come to God in prayer, please join with the response. When I say, for the Lord is good, please respond, his steadfast love endures forever. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the depth, height and breadth of your love that we see so clearly revealed in the life, death and rising of your Son, Jesus Christ. So vast is your love that there is room for all in your embrace. In this coming week, as we turn to you every day, help us to receive your love, that we may offer our love to you and to those around us. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Faithful God, we pray for your church at Yarm. We know that to keep everyone safe, we cannot come physically together at present, but we give thanks for the technology and those who operate it, through which we can worship you and enjoy fellowship, even at a distance. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. We pray for those who are young in years or young in faith. May they be guided well and grow daily in love for you and their neighbours. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. We pray for those who've walked the pilgrimage of faith for many years, and those too who have grown weary by that daily toil. Lord, encourage and restore them, and lead them once more to the well of living water that is your Son, Jesus Christ. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. We pray for all who are longing for this lockdown to come to an end, so they can work, go to school, meet with loved ones and friends, at school, at church, in the high street, in the park or at home. Grant them hope that in the midst of the darkness of this time, Nothing can extinguish the light of your love, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. We pray for those who are finding this time of restrictions upon their lives especially difficult. For all who are living with issues affecting their mental health. May they find the love, understanding and support they need. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. For all who are sick, whether in hospital or at home, we pray for their healing. We also give thanks and pray for all who work in the NHS and social care, that they may know love and care themselves as they love and care for others. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. We pray that you would grant each of us a fresh inpouring of your Holy Spirit, that we would be renewed and refreshed for our daily walk with Jesus, trusting that you will always be faithful. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. We remember those who've gone before us as faithful followers of the way of Christ, giving thanks for their love and their example. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. We offer these our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our final hymn this morning, number 109 in Singing the Faith. In the darkness of the still night, 
in the dawning of the daylight, in the mystery of creation. Creator God, you are there. And now, may the voice of God call to you. May the word of God speak to you. May the spirit of God guide you. May the hand of God protect you. May the love of God dwell in you. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, on those you love and on those who you serve this day and always. Amen.